short order cook and a domestic worker uh, who had an opportunity to study at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, earn a degree, and years and years later gets to sit on this side of the dais. I thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Padilla. Senator Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, judge, Councilman, welcome. Um, Council, let me, let me uh, start with just a few general questions. Can you give me your thoughts about the meaning and the importance, if you think it's important, of uh, the adequate and independent state ground doctrine, which you'll probably see a lot on the Court of Appeal? Sure, uh, Senator Kennedy. It's, it's actually a doctrine of the Supreme Court mm -hmm. uh, that governs uh, when a case uh, presents federal grounds, but if there's also an independent and adequate state court ground that supports the decision, the Supreme Court will not choose to take the case. So the Supreme Court is the body that has the ability to exercise that doctrine. The Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, if I am confirmed to it, would not have that opportunity because as you know, the Court of Appeals takes every case that's appealed to it. It doesn't have the ability like the Supreme Court does to pick and choose which cases it will hear. So you're saying that the Seventh Circuit can't decide a case or invoke the adequate and independent state ground doctrine? Uh, Senator, there are other abstention doctrines that would govern if the Seventh Circuit, uh, if a panel uh, felt that there were state court questions that needed to be resolved so the federal case should hold off for a bit, or if there was an independent state court ground uh, for the case that ne necessitated a particular type of ruling, but it, it wouldn't, that doctrine would not cause the Seventh Circuit to not take the, appeal, take the case to begin with. The Seventh Circuit has to consider the appeal and then right. issue a decision, yes. Right. But you're not saying that the adequate and independent state ground doctrine is not applicable to the Seventh Circuit, are you? I'm saying that's a doctrine of the Supreme Court and the Seventh Circuit has it's, other doc It's a doctrine of the Court of Appeals too, isn't it? Uh, my understanding, and I will, I, will, I will tell you, Senator Kennedy, uh, that this is not an area I've been litigating in the last 16 years, but this is my broad understanding that it's a doctrine of the Supreme Court. Okay. Um, what is your definition of justice? Thank you for the question, Senator Kennedy. Uh, Emblazoned on the Supreme Court uh, across the street is equal justice under law. I marry that with the ethical canons and codes of conduct that apply to judges. And one of them includes uh, treating all parties fairly and impartially mm -hmm. and acting with diligence and upholding the independence of the court. And I think when you marry all of those concepts together, then you arrive at hopefully what is justice uh, for the parties who, become, who come before a court. Um, Counselor, do you believe that, uh, that crime is a, is a a disease that needs a cure, or is it uh, antisocial behavior that deserves punishment? Senator Kennedy, uh, neither of those options are words I've ever used mm -hmm. uh, to describe crime, uh, which has been my province for the last 10 years, representing people accused of crime and who have pled guilty uh, to crime, if there's anything that my decade as a public defender taught me is how gray uh, everything is uh, and how there's often a faint line, uh, an indescribable line, sometimes a complicated line from when someone goes from being law-abiding to breaking a law. 
and all the reasons why that happens and all the different ways we as a society can address that. And I hope to bring that nuanced understanding with me to the circuit court if confirmed. Uh, I will be guided by the law and have to apply the law and would willingly do that to the facts of any different ca case. But I think that nuanced understanding will enhance my ability to understand the facts of any given case. Okay. Um, are you a textualist? or a proposivist? Thank you, Senator Kennedy. One of the things that I expressed to your colleague um, who asked a question earlier about a living constitution, and there was yet another question about judicial activism, is that I don't find uh, these labels uh, particularly helpful. Uh, they mean so many things to so many different people. Uh, what we do know is that the Supreme Court has instructed us that one actually, must first... Actually, counsel, I think they're pretty standard definitions. Can you tell me which way you lean? Uh, no, Senator. The Supreme Court has instructed um, that one must first look to the text of the Constitution, the plain meaning there, also the plain meaning of the text of a statute. And so that method, the Supreme Court has uh, uh, in instructed uh, judges what to do. C Counselor, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but my chairman's very strict on me, and I do want to get to ask the judge one question in my 35 seconds, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. Judge, you've been on the bench, and you've seen the, the, the federal judicial system up close, and I agree with you, America's a remarkable country. D do you think the federal judicial system is systemically racist? Senator, thank you for that question. Um, I am aware of social science research. I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I'm aware of social science research. In, yes, ma'am. In particular, in my former area of expertise, which is in sentencing, um, that relates to ways in which um, policy choices about various aspects of the system mm -hmm. can have demographic disparate effects. The most obvious one is one that this body has worked on uh, very hard and much appreciated the, the 100 to 1 crack powder disparity. Mm -hmm. As a judge, I am not looking at systemic effects. I'm not thinking about or focusing on or forming opinions about the, the research or the, uh, or, or the circumstances in the abstract like that. I am looking at each case a person might make a claim that they've been discriminated against in a particular context, and I am applying the law to determine whether or not the law sustains that claim. So I don't really have a frame of reference to answer a question about systemic racism, but I, I am happy that you are thinking about those things because they're in the province of the policymakers like, like yourself. 